Hi, my name's Ebo and I work in the Digital Workspace team. I have Jack and Michaela here with me today. Hi, I'm Michaela, I'm a Microsoft Licensing Specialist. Hi, I'm Jack, I'm a Technical Architect with Microsoft 365. Microsoft has launched Microsoft 365 and Office 365 and there are still some parts that are unclear to our customers. I have a list of questions that are commonly asked by customers that hopefully you can help me get to the bottom of today. Everybody seems to be talking about Office 365. First of all, what is Office 365 and why is it so desirable for organisations? I think we get asked this quite a lot because it's more than just Office. Um, fundamentally, it's a load of traditional productivity services hosted in Microsoft data centres, as well as some quite cool, innovative 365 only technology. And then you've got the Office client, and that's on up to 15 devices per user. There are also some efficiencies that organisations can make by moving to Office 365, by not having to manage on-premises servers anymore. So, Office 365 is delivered as a, as a cloud service. Why have we moved away from the traditional on-premises offering to this model? I think there are two sides to it. So you've got the customer's requirements to be able to be more agile and productive, I suppose, um, to be able to work on any device, anywhere they want, and have that same sort of user interface. And then you've also got Microsoft that traditionally have only ever had conversations with their customers anytime they wanted to upgrade, whereas now with this kind of evergreen, always up-to-date service, they can have that conversation with their customers on a monthly or maybe annual basis, which allows them to be a bit more strategic. Yeah, and cloud services like Office 365 are incredibly scalable, which means that organisations can scale up and scale down to meet the needs of the business. Additionally, Office 365 is a platform for innovation, so there are new features constantly being driven into the services, whether they are to improve productivity and creativity or to improve security of the offering as well. And also, I think it's important to keep in mind that Microsoft isn't stopping innovation on the on-premises versions of the product. So on-premises Exchange still receives feature updates on a three-yearly basis when the new server editions are released. I've heard that Office 365 can bring employees closer together through collaboration and co-authoring. Mm -hmm. Can you explain this to me? I think this is where it gets quite exciting with Microsoft 365 because um, it allows me to do things quicker and uh, I suppose empowers me to be more collaborative with my colleagues. So it depends on whether I want to co-author on a document or maybe I want to spin up a meeting very quickly, but it allows me to do it in a way that's safe. And by doing so, I'm being more productive and therefore probably making more money for my organisation. Yeah, the co-authoring and the collaboration features are really powerful. Mm -hmm. They bring employees closer together. It doesn't matter whether you're inside or outside of the office as well, because Office 365 is delivered as a cloud service that's available from anywhere on, on any device. OK, but because Office 365 is a cloud service, where is my data actually stored? Yeah, this is probably the question we get asked the most. So firstly, it's worth noting Microsoft don't necessarily have access to the data, they're acting as the custodians of the data. And where your data is stored is actually dependent on when you set up your environment, so where you set up your tenant. So for instance, if I was to set up my tenant today in London, say, my data would reside in the UK data centres. Are there any exceptions to this? Yeah, there's some minor exceptions to the rule, particularly around Yammer and Azure AD. They are replicated to the United States. What we would encourage organisations to do is visit the Office 365 Trust Centre and understand what their contractual obligations are for storing data. I've worked with organisations that have strict compliance requirements around encryption of data and data sovereignty. Surely this means that they'll never be able to get to Office 365? Yeah, not anymore. Microsoft have made a lot of improvements to help that small sort of subset of customers that have more, I suppose, particular or stringent data sovereignty rules. So they brought out something reasonably recently called multi-geo tenancies, which allows customers to move specific workloads into data centres around the world. Yeah, and alongside multi-geo capabilities, which can solve data sovereignty challenges, organisations that are required to provision and manage encryption keys on premises. There is a bring your own key and hold your own key scenarios within Office 365 that allow customers to bring their own keys into Office 365. The Office 365 will then use that encryption key for encrypting data at rest. If my data doesn't reside in my own on-premise data center anymore, how do we secure it? Yes, yeah, so there's kind of two key areas that we need to think about here when it comes to security when Office 365 is introduced. Number one, access into the service because it is available from anywhere on any device and we can't put a firewall around it. 
Typically, we recommend organisations use multi-factor authentication and conditional access. These capabilities are available within enterprise mobility and security. Secondly, there's the data itself. We'd recommend that organisations look into Azure Information Protection, which is able to classify data and then apply file level protection and encryption and rights to the data. And that protection is persistent. So it doesn't matter where that data resides, whether it's copied from Office 365 back to the local endpoint or onto a USB key, the encryption stays with the file. So let's use the scenario where I want to work with Jack and I want to send him a document. Perhaps I want him to edit it and send it back to me, but I definitely don't want him to forward it on or do anything he shouldn't with that document. 365 allows us to do that in a way that's keeping us productive, but also I'm not worried about what's happening to that data. And say, for instance, I realise actually it wasn't intended for Jack in the first place, I can track and revoke that as well, so I can retrospectively go in and revoke access to that document. How do I get there? What's the migration process? Yeah, so this is always going to vary on a workload by workload basis. So depending on which workload you want to move to the cloud, whether that's Exchange mailboxes from Exchange on-premises to Exchange Online, or data from your on-premises file shares to SharePoint Online, there are different methodologies available. Also, migration approaches are always going to be very organisationally personal. So we'd recommend that organisations get in touch with the Softcat account manager and ask to speak to a migration expert where we can provide assistance from a pro services perspective. What I would say is we're really well versed in platforms outside of Microsoft as well, mm. so not just on-premise to 365. We will look across all the other platforms that are out there. And also, our CSP customers have the ability to draw down on technical how-to advice as well. So we will remotely be able to support them in migrating their users over as long as we're not doing it on their behalf. And how does the licensing work? So it's really scalable and flexible, more so now than ever. We can fix in pricing for up to 12 months or up to three years for some of our larger customers. And we've also got the ability to do more consumption-based billing now. So a customer can spin up the services and then pay for what they've actually used the next month. Yeah, and because this is a cloud service that's designed for mobility, end users typically have multiple devices. So the billing model is typically per user rather than per device. Okay, thanks Jack and Michaela. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to find out more about Microsoft 365, please head to the link below. Or if you have any more questions, please speak to your friendly Softcat account manager. Thanks for watching.